Hello everyone and greeting in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Silas and I'm here with Nancy Grace. And today we're going to listen to this convert story. It says, why I left Islam after preaching it for 16 years. Okay. <laughs> this is another interesting um, video. So guys, if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get down to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes and I believe that we all are going to learn from this. So guys, let's get down to this video and check this out. Hello, peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Brother Ismail. I've been a Muslim for 16 years. But in the past few years, I have been bothered by some reoccurring issues which have forced me to question my Islamic faith. And recently, I have decided to finally leave Islam. And in this video, I will explain why. Now, I don't think it's fair for Muslims to consider me as some kind of traitor or sellout because over the years I've done my best to be faithful and loyal to Islam. I did not play games with Islam and I took my Islamic faith very seriously and whenever I found any Islamic teaching difficult, problematic or controversial, I always did my best to research the issue for myself and for my fellow Muslims to resolve it. I certainly was not perfect but I think very few people would question my sincerity to Allah, Muhammad, and to Islam. So I can assure you that I was committed to this religion called Islam. Now let me address the title of this video, the question, why I left Islam. The answer to this question is the Quran and Muhammad and their teachings on moral standards and conduct. You see, over the past few years, I have found that I am no longer able to defend the Qur'an and especially Muhammad's moral, morals and conduct. In the past, I have done my best to defend Islam and in particular to defend Muhammad from the claims and charges made against him. I tried my best to love Muhammad and I can prove I stood up for him and defended him many times. For example, I produced videos like was Muhammad merciful, where I tried to provide examples of Muhammad's good character. And my video, Who are the Islam haters, where I tried to refute and expose the anti-Islamic critics, and I made many more videos in which I defended Islam and Muhammad. Most of the time I was successful in defending Muhammad against those who were attacking his character as I was well educated in Islam and I studied Islamic apologetics for years. However, while I was defending Islam, I have noticed, I had noticed, many of the criticisms were actually valid and based on authentic early Islamic sources. And I found myself at a loss to find adequate, honest responses to them. In the coming videos, I shall share with you many of the allegations made against the Quran and Muhammad that I could no longer defend. But for the sake of brevity, in this video I will provide you with one example on the topic of sexual immorality. As shocking as it may seem, both the Quran and Muhammad teach that it's permissible, halal, to capture and rape female war captives. Even if these women are married, and their non-Muslim husbands are still alive. So let's investigate the Islamic sources to see what they say. The Quran in chapter 4 verses 22 and 23 informs Muslim men about the categories of women which they are forbidden to marry. But in ayah number 24 we read, Well muhsanatu minan nisa'i illa ma malakat aymanukum. Also forbidden are women already married except those whom your right hands possess. So we see here in the Quran an exception, an example where it is permissible, halal, for a Muslim man to marry a woman who already has a husband. But who are these women described as being owned or possessed by your right hand? For the answer, let us turn to the most famous commentator on the Quran, Ibn Kathir 
who, while commenting on Quran chapter 4, 24, said the following, quote, Allah said, وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ إِلَّا مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ Also forbidden are women already married except those whom your right hands possess. The ayah means you are prohibited from marrying women who are already married. إِلَّا مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ Except those whom your right hands possess, meaning except those whom you acquire through war, for you are allowed such women after making sure they are not pregnant. Imam Ahmed recorded that Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said, We captured some women from the area of al tas who were already married, and we disliked having sexual relations with them because they already had husbands. So we asked the Prophet about this matter, and this ayah was revealed. وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ إِلَّا مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ Also forbidden are women already married, except those whom your right hands possess. Consequently, we had sexual relations with these women. This is the recording collected by At-Tirmidhi and Nasa'i, Ibn Jarir and Muslim in his Sahih. Now at this point, maybe you're in a state of shock. Maybe you're even saying to yourself, this is impossible. The glorious Quran and the noble Prophet Muhammad would never teach such sexual immorality. Or maybe you're thinking, there must be some other more positive interpretation to the Quran, chapter 4, verse 24. Or maybe you're even trying to convince yourself that the great Islamic scholar and the most famous Quran commentator, Ibn Kathir, is completely wrong and he has no idea what he's talking about. Brothers and sisters, I wish all of that were true, but unfortunately, when we investigate the matter further, things just get worse. For example, we read in the following hadith, in Sunan Abi Dawood, volume 2, hadith number 2155, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri narrated, the Messenger of Allah, meaning Muhammad, sent a military expedition to al tas on the day of Hunayn, and they met their enemy, fought them, and defeated them. They took captives. فَكَأَنَّ أُنَاسًا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ تَحَرَّجُوا مِنْ غِشْيَانِهِنَّ مِنْ أَجْلِ أَزْوَاجِهِنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ but some of the companions of the Messenger of Allah were reluctant or felt uncomfortable to have relations, meaning sex, with them, meaning the female captives, because of their pagan husbands. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فِي ذَلِكْ وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ إِلَّا مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ So Allah revealed the Quranic verse, and forbidden are women already married except those whom your right hands possess. And this is again uh, Quran chapter 4 verse 24 as we said. أَيْ فَهُنَّ لَهُمْ حَلَالٌ إِذَا أَنْقَضَتْ عِدَّتُهُنْ Meaning they are lawful or allowed for them when they complete their waiting period. And this hadith, my brothers and sisters, is صحيح or authentic. So this hadith informs us that the Muslim soldiers had a problem. They wanted to have sex with the female captives, but these women were already married and they had husbands who were still living. So Muhammad then claims to receive a revelation from Allah that instructs the Muslim men to wait for a period of time to ensure that the female captives are not pregnant. And then after that period, these Muslim men are allowed to go and have sex with these married women. Now ask yourself this question. How would you feel if your wife or any woman in your family was captured by some enemy soldiers, then forced to divorce her husband, then forced to marry one of those enemy soldiers, then forced to have sex with that enemy soldier whom she obviously hated. And all of this happened while her husband was still alive. Do you think that your wife, your sister, your daughter, or your mother would agree to have these things forced upon her in humiliation? No sane person in his or her right mind could defend the Qur'an and Muhammad on this issue. This is nothing more than legalized rape of married women. 
and I cannot believe that this is from God. So, therefore, I am rejecting the Qur'an and Muhammad on this issue. Now you have some idea why I left Islam. And in the coming videos, I hope to share more reasons with you, because there are many. Thank you for watching, and may God bless you and me and us all. Amen. Hmm. This is actually a very um, interesting video, a very um, touching one, per se. <laughs> it makes you very um, emotional watching and listening to him. But I would like to state that, um, nevertheless, Prophet Muhammad was a human being and he was actually a leader over the people. Now, I would like to state that I think he was wrong for him leaving Islam because of Prophet Muhammad. The reason why I'm saying so is that the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad to the people. Prophet Muhammad is just a tool to deliver God's message. So Prophet Muhammad is not God. So the God what was given through him does not mean that whatever he do is right. So there are some decisions that the Prophet took upon himself because he was a leader upon the people. So he was just trying to please them by doing some certain things and not actually because God told him that because you have won the battle against these people then take the, the women let them be there for some time if they are not pregnant then you can have sex with them or rape them and all that those things in a sense that happen by that time of course it is wrong for you to want to sleep with a woman who is married to another man that one is wrong so i think in my own opinion i think that the prophet took that decision on his own and not that he did that because of god told him to do so because god will not say such a thing do you get the thing yeah and he was just a prophet for instance god can use you to send a message to some particular kind of people or to someone right yes the message you might say may be good and 100 percent from good but there are some decisions or things that you may say which may not necessarily means that they are from god something can happen and maybe you are advising someone or you are talking to someone yes you can talk to the person as human but that does not necessarily means that the message is directly from god for instance we preachers of course we can preach and when we preach we don't preach because of this is what we feel as to say we preach based on what god says that we should go and say to the people and then when it is time for us to advise the people and talk to them about some certain things about how maybe they should live their life or maybe how they should be able to live with their families these are things that we are doing on our own ability yes i know sometimes we can pray that god give me the wisdom on how to be able to handle this kind of um, challenge or family issues or whatever that is happening with the congregation which is a different thing so anything i should say at that point in time is what i think is the right way but not necessarily means that it is god who is telling me that it should be this way right yeah so this is how me i understood it but then let's hear from nancy grace oh oh this video is very interesting listening to the young man's story how he left islam so i think the story is just based on his own all right so guys this is the end of my video if you like our reaction if you like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys remain blessed